Welcome back to the Sunday Footy Show. Matthew Lloyd, I love the way that Matthew comes in each Sunday morning and he's prepared mm. and he has, Bill, you know what he has? He has content. content. <laughs> exactly. And you also have reeled in a big fish. I have us. reeled in a big fish, one of the biggest fish of all time and that is one of the greatest players of all time at Team of the Century in both Essendon and it's the Hawthorne effort. Footy Clubs. Amazing effort. effort. The great Paul Salmon. Fish, thanks for joining us. Oh, it's great to be here, Lordy, and uh, you're looking magnificent, mate, and... Uh, <laughs> A beautiful Sunday it is, and thanks for the intro. A little bit of a bit over, bit too much mayonnaise, but I'm grateful. Uh, you love it, fish. Don't try and act <laughs> like you don't. <laughs> hey, fish. We'll put up your credentials before we start chatting about your career and some of your finest moments. Here it is. Obviously, you had a couple of stints at the Bombers and uh, one great stint at Hawthorne. You know, 520 goals, but at the Bombers, where you're at star full forward, two premierships. To all Australians, then you went to Hawthorne Fish and you won two bests and fairest there and made your way into the team of the century off just what was it, four or five seasons of footy. Talk us through firstly <laughs> leaving for, the, for Hawthorne and then going back to the Bombers. Uh, look, it was a, uh, it was a, a challenging time, the, the, the whole leaving Essendon and, um, at a, and starting at Hawthorne at 31 was um, a, a big deal because my body had been letting me down for a couple of years, Lordy, and uh, wasn't sure I had much footy left in me so the five years at Hawthorne were incredibly special um, at a pretty special time when the club was you know coming um, through a merger period and, and re-establishing itself and um, so it was exciting and then of course I had a year off I retired um, at the end of 2000 and then uh, got a call from Sheeds who thought um, and Adrian Dodoro at Essen who thought that I, um, <laughs> I had something to offer and so I went back for a year to spend some time with uh, big Steve Alessio and David Hill which was um, which I don't regret at all it was it was good fun, but it was, a, it was a crazy time. You must love the fact that the legacy of Paul Salmon will go on and on and on as long as the game itself, really, because I do recall uh, a particular match at the MCG, Essendon versus West Coast. You needed this. Essendon needed this. And what followed has become one of the great traditions of football. And I think you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I do. It was, a uh, again, uh, in the context of that season, TJ, that game... It meant everything to, uh, to us at the time because it, it gave us a, a look at uh, getting a double chance in the finals. The West Coast were a power team at the time and I think up until that kick I'd kicked, um, I had a, a case of the yips the previous uh, two or three weeks so I had about 12 straight points so uh, that kick, when you think of it in the in the bigger picture, was um, the last bloke any of my teammates wanted to have the ball in the hands of was me. So um, I, I saw the humour in that but I was incredibly relieved and then of course Sheeds waved his jacket and um, after that it's uh, become something of a, uh, a bit of a signpost for Bomber victories over West Coast, which is pretty cool. You said you were kicking points, but then in the grand final in 93, you slipped through five of the big ones. We've got some vision of it here. What a beautiful day it was. Talk us through oh. some of these highlights and your thoughts of the day. The dangerous thing to ask me is to talk you through some of my highlights. <laughs> it could be, it'll take a while. Um, no, I, I, I kind of, yeah, always like to get off to a good start of the big game. So um, I got my hand on the ball a couple of times early and, and the, the guys were up and about. We had a wonderful squad of players that year. And um, what Michael Long and Gavin Wanganeen were doing was pretty extraordinary. Gary O'Donnell played his pants off in the grand final that year. And across the board, we just had a, a really good chemistry in that team. And, um, you know, history shows it was sandwiched between the West Coast uh, uh, teams of the uh, early 90s, the great Geelong teams of that period. So, you know, some suggest we snuck it. Um, we pinched that one, but we were the best side for the year, and it kind of uh, culminated in one of the most exciting, you know, grand finals that, you know, certainly I was part of. It was a really special time. Hey, Fish, you got to play in that grand final, but unfortunately you missed out on the 84 one where you burst onto the scene, you were absolutely on fire, uh, but you were still part of the celebrations. Here's some vision of you and Mark Harvey after the 84 <laughs> flag. Paul, must have been very, very heart-rendering to watch all the boys get the medals, knowing how much you'd put in the 63 goals in the 13 games and knowing that you'd have to spend half the season on the sidelines. It, it is very hard, but, uh, you know, you don't feel a real part of it until you're not played. But, uh, you know, it's great to see all the boys, their faces. I mean, they deserve it thoroughly. I mean, I, 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 even at half time, I knew they'd win three-quarter time. It was, it was there. They got a lot in them. They got a big hearts, and it was great. Good seeing your little blonde mate here do well. Yeah, the young fella, he's done all right for himself, hasn't he, eh? Isn't it lovely? A couple of 19-year-olds. <laughs> but look oh, at that. Chris. Had a couple of frothies fish. <laughs> that is brilliant. Oh, Billy. Um, I was very tight and emotional when that happened. In fact, 
Uh, it's funny looking at it. Um, I was embarrassed about that for a while, but um, Steve Phillips stitches up with a few. I was already toasted, but Steve, he gave us a couple of, God bless him, he gave us a couple of beers before the interview and uh, just make, it, make sure we were relaxed. And um, it's, it's hard to watch. He's marinated sandwich. There's always been a great rumour about the 1999 Brownlow Medal night. Shane Crawford won the Brownlow Medal that night, and here is his take on it. I want to get your take afterwards. Paul, is it true that you once chased a journalist, Mr Craig Hutchison, through a function down a hallway, so much so that some of the guests were fearing that you were going to end his life? Tell the truth, Paul. So tell the truth, no, Paul. No, that's, there is... <laughs> thanks, Brownie. Um, <laughs> no, there was no, there's no truth in me chasing Hutchie down a hallway at all on that night. Again, uh, a long day, tired and emotional, up in Sydney and... Um, you know, sometimes the, 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 the seafood platter doesn't agree with you. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and things happen. That's all. Nothing, nothing untoward happened. Uh, Shane's just got a colourful memory, that's all. Uh, hey, Fish, I'm interested in how much footy you watch today. And do you have any sympathy for the big forward? We're seeing in around 15, the key forward is on top of the com with 35. Good question. Um, look, the game changes and evolves so much. We hear it all the time. Uh, not much sympathy. I mean, I, I think um, uh, empathy in terms of how hard it is. I mean, obviously, with the numbers that are pushing back in, in front of you nowadays, it's much harder to find those little gaps that uh, you, you, you treasure as a, a forward coming out of the goal square. So a lot of empathy there. It's, um, uh, you really have to be good at your craft in terms of uh, you know, your body work, your one-on-one. -on -one. But really enjoy watching the game um, nowadays. I don't watch it. I, don't, I haven't got an insatiable appetite came, but I, um, I certainly love the game very much and, um, you know, obviously this year being locked up, I've seen more of it than I have over the previous few, but, um, but you know, it is, it is what it is and it's going to be a different looking game in a few years' time in, in the subtleties, but I also enjoy watching the Ruckman go about their job. There's some quality big guys out there at the moment and uh, doing some, you know, really wonderful work, so keeping the craft of Ruck work alive and well, there's still a, there's still a place for the big boys in the, in the team. Hey, Fish, uh, just want to know how your body is and particularly your back. I just want to know how your back is. But first of all, have a look at this magnificent <laughs> ad. Oh, I've had a bad back for years. And after a layoff, the pain can bite a bit. But as the sports medicos say, if you work through the pain, it'll come good because hurt doesn't always mean harm. So if your back twinges a bit, don't give up. Work through it. You'll be surprised how you can kick on. Hey, fish. Training, remember? Yeah. Righto. Come on, the Hawks. Endorsed by the AMA Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> How is it? What, what's going on? What, what's, the archives at Channel 9 are very impressive. Um, <laughs> Can you, I can just make special note of the boys, the props in the background. We went, and got to, we went to the top shelf and got Dicko and Crawford in the background on that one. I'll, I'll save Fish here. Good. Thanks for showing an interest, Billy. It means we'll, a lot to me. We'll save you now, Fish, but after the break, deep dive time, why I wanted Fish on, we're going to revisit oh. Essendon played Geelong today. One of the great games of all yes. time. 1993, Fish and Gary Ablett Senior kicked 24 between them. <laughs> it is deep dive time, and today, as I said, Geelong play the Essendon Footy Club. We're looking forward to that one, but hope it gets anywhere near close to this game. It was the day where Fish and Ablett put oh, on one of the great oh. spectacles of all time. 24 goals per term. Let's tell you, I love this one, handballs. Zero handballs <laughs> yeah. for Fish, zero handballs <laughs> for Gary Ablett Senior. 25 kicks for Ablett, 18 for Fish. 10 marks, 12 marks, 14 goals, 7 for Ablett, 10 goals, 6 oh. for Fish. Ablett got three Brownlow votes, Fish two. Fish got two. 14 goals, 7, and they got beaten. And the score, unbelievable. <laughs> 23 goals, 18, 156 to 9 and 18, 130. If only that would happen. But uh, let's take a look at some of Ablett's highlights on this day. I already had that many opponents. I reckon James Hurd had a go. Yeah, he did. Timmy Watson, possibly. Uh, yes, Danaher. Yeah, look at this one. It just Kicking bounces. Danaher. Uh, Ablett was on fire, Bill. One of the yeah. great... You didn't play this day, Bill? No, I said, Gaz, you just go out in there and destroy him. <laughs> I'll have a spell today. Uh, but he was on fire. Yeah. But so was another bloke down the other end, yeah. Lordo. Uh, Paul Salmon, who was very good also. He kicked 10, by the way. We forget about that fish, don't we? We, we do tend to, and I, I would love uh, Gary Senior stepping up occasionally every year this happens and pulling his weight for me. Um, it, was a, it was an amazing day out. There's no question about that. And it's, it's kind of nice that it's, um, it's remembered like it is. Hey, Fish, would this be the game you're reminded about the most of any game you played or not? Oh, absolutely, Lordy. It's, um, uh, it, it's, it's nice in a way. I mean, obviously, uh, 
as a player to get to re, you know to have people reflect on one game you played is um, is pretty extraordinary. But that's largely because of what Gary was doing up the other end. It was um, amazing party tricks on his behalf. I was pretty pedestrian, but uh, the day was a, the day was amazing. Um, and you know there was lots of good players on the day. We had Darren Buick kick four goals and Joe Masidi getting the ball at will. And Geelong had their power midfield, the Couchy and um, Hocking and Bearstow. So. Mm -hmm. Look, I think um, Sheed's plans of trying to shut that midfield down didn't quite work out as well <laughs> yeah. as uh, it was meant to. But in a way, also, it probably was a nail in the coffin for um, key forwards. I mean, if you've got a, a key forward like Gary kicks 14, you still lose. I think coaches started to ask the question about the, um, you know, the value of having one avenue to go. So Kilda play Hawthorne today, Fish, and amazingly you were involved in this game where this was a quarter-time score, nine goals, 4.58. Oh. Timmy Watson... The coach of the Saints and Hawthorne, one goal, one seven. The lead got out later on to 63 points, but uh, this is it here, Brownie. Stewie Lowe kicks the goal to put them 63 points up in the second quarter, and you think there's no way home from here. Tear down the grandstands. Oh. Hawthorne having a really bad day, but it changed. And you, Fish, you're involved in this one. What, what are your memories of this day? Yeah, great memories of this one. Um, yeah, we were we were just um, dance partners in the first quarter and a half, and then it's around halfway through the second quarter, we got one or two going into half time, and um, and that was uh, that was enough to give us a bit of a taste. We went at half time, and one of the young fellows said we got this, and we relaxed, and um, we came out of half time. And I think you know guys like Nathan Thompson, um, you know Ben Dix was fantastic that day. Well, everyone just stood up and played their role. I know it sounds like a boring comment, but. What a rush it was. It was the first um, Silk Miller game um, which uh, was played between the Hawks and Saints. And, uh, you know, that, was, uh, that added extra significance to the day. And, of course, just to get over the line in the end was uh, it's one of my great memories in football. There's no question about that. That was one of my favourite games ever. And we're told, Fish, you're on the Sunday footy show the following morning. Uh, oh, no. but before, we hit, before we let you go, uh, what are you doing with yourself these days, Fish? Just pottering around, mate. You could call me almost semi-retired now. Oh, no, I've got a little. Uh, I've got a little tech business I'm working on in the um, in the lifestyle mental health space. So I'm really enjoying that. All right, great work uh, post career, and what a great career it was. Fish, always great to catch up with you. Thanks very much for your time this morning. Great to see you guys. Uh, appreciate it. Happy Thank Father's you. Day. Yes, indeed, yeah. and to you too. How old are your kids now? Uh, all, all thirty plus, mate. So getting on. And I'm going to be a grandfather in October. So I'm pumped about oh, that. Oh, well done. They're all thirty plus. Yeah, yeah, got them there. Where did you start when you were 12 or something? <laughs> <laughs> What's an old fish? Sorry? What's an old fish, a grandfather fish? Uh, good question. We'll, we'll ponder <laughs> that in the ad break.